Okay, now we will go into our unit mix rent and interior renovation strategy. So this is the next section down on our list. And this underwriting model works just top to bottom. We just go through each section to underwrite a deal. And in this case, you could see I went ahead and I put in the bedrooms and bathrooms and units and the average square footage for every unit. I do like to mark them as classic, partially renovated or renovated. A lot of times we'll get unit mixes that have some renovated units that are, and then some that are not. I like to be able to differentiate between those units. And what this does is it has a formula that combines these cells for you to come up with a unit type description. If you don't like that description, it's in orange and you can overwrite that. Then I'll go ahead and put in the current market rents. I get these typically from the rent roll initially. Uh, this is just the average market rent for this unit type. Uh, I will evaluate that against the rent roll performance and the local market to try and determine whether or not those current market rents are accurate because usually the market rent listed in a rent roll is whatever the property manager thinks the market rent is, but it's not always accurate. So you want to make sure you dial in what the current market rents are. And then I will specify in this renovation plan section how many units that I want to renovate. So this is a really important part of the model and a difference with some other models that I've seen out there. So what this model does is it takes your current market rent and it takes your renovation timeline and your renovation plan and it assumes two days for renovation and lease up or two months sorry for renovation and lease up. using that information of two months for renovation and the number of units to renovate this model will roll your rents from your current market rent to your post renovation rent over that renovation timeline. In this case, it's 24 months. So over 24 months, the model is gonna linearly roll units from this rent into a vacancy bucket for two months and then back on to the rent roll at the post renovation rent. Uh, so after you've put in the units to renovate, you put in your unit cost and then it calculates for you your total renovation cost for the interior and then the rent premium per unit. So this is the rent premium you expect to receive on those renovated units. So if you had a unit mix where you're not renovating certain units and you don't put in a rent premium, you don't do any of this, this part. And then the post renovation rent is essentially equal to the current market rent. Let's say that unit's already renovated. Uh, and then you can see your post renovation rents here. Uh, some interesting totals below. So you could, for the current market rent, you can see the gross potential rent here, the bottom, and then you can see this is the average rental increase for only the renovated units in this box. And then this is the average rental increase per unit for all units across the entire property as a result of the renovation plan. In this case, they are equal because we're renovating 100% of the units. But in some cases, you can see if we were just to do, let's say zero of those units. Um, and then you can see we have $265 renovation premium on the renovated units, which is $173 premium across all units for the property as a result of the renovation. Uh, and then it calculates your GPR gross potential rent for the post renovated units. And that's in today's dollars. And the whole purpose of this exercise is to generate your gross potential rent and your renovation vacancy, which we will see in the income section below.